Hey folks, how's it going? R&D Diesel, and today we're going to be installing a set of gauges, or actually technically just one gauge, today on my 97 Ford F-350. Now if you're like me and you like pushing the limits in your truck, it's very important that we keep an eye on exhaust gas temperatures, transmission temperature, and boost pressure to not only maximize performance, but also to ensure that the truck doesn't blow up. And that's why it's so important that we have a set of gauges to monitor every parameter, and also, well heck, it's just good for troubleshooting anyways, and making sure that we stay on top of everything, on top of any problem that we might have with the truck. Stay tuned. All right, first order of business is to go through and make sure that we have everything we need for the glow shift. So I ordered this glow shift three in one with the black face exhaust gas temperature sensor. This right here actually just shows the boost pressure, but mine actually has the EGTs on it on the face. And then I've got transmission temperature, and then I've also got boost pressure as the secondary gauges as well. So basically this thing, whole thing is 3-in-1 gauge, comes in this box just like this. Mine was a little mangled from, from transport, but other, all in all it still seems like everything's in good shape. So we open this thing up, there's some instructions that GlowShift provides with you. They have a little bit of this guide here that tells you everything that you have, kind of tells you where things go. So transmission temperature sensor, you've got your power harness, things like that. Another instruction piece. Okay, now certainly delving into the rest of the package, it comes with this little gauge holder. I actually had already screwed this thing together. The screws were originally separate. It's put all together pretty basic there. You got the gauge itself. And of course the gauge just slides right in. But you'll notice it's a bit of a loose fit, so I think there's gonna be some way to help put it all together and make sure it's snug. Yeah, that's why it looks like it came with this piece of foam with some adhesive backing, so it looks like you can Put that around there, squish it in there a little better. We'll figure that out. We'll cross that ridge once we get there, I guess. Came with this bag here. It's got one cable here. And this here is the exhaust gas temperature probe. It's a thermocouple. It's got this nice stainless steel sheeting around it. And it's got these bullet connectors on the end. It's got some adhesive backing here that looks like we can use to secure down the gauge mount. We've got another long cable here. This is probably either for the EGT probe or it's going to be for the boost more likely. Dinky short little power harness. Now I didn't order the extension power harness just because it adds price and I figure I have enough wire sitting around that I can extend this and make do with whatever I need. But that's all you get, maybe about a foot or so, not that long. Okay, now this here, okay, this is definitely for the boost pressure. It's got a connector on the back and then it's got a, a clip similar to the injection pressure regulator on the 7.3 looks basically exactly the same actually boost pressure sensor got another cover here that looks like it might be for setting up the gauge in another way and transmission temperature sensor probe as well and that's pretty much all there is here to the GlowShift gauge setup. But I think the first order of business we got to do is extend this power harness so that we have enough room to work. In addition to the regular GlowShift gauges, I went ahead and got a few things that I thought would be pretty useful for this project. And then I got two of these little out of circuit deals from the auto store. And my plan is to use these in my pre existing fuse box so I can have a nice looking connection. That way I can also install a fuse to protect the gauge itself and the rest of the components. This is pretty much just your usual suspects whenever it comes to electrical work. Okay, so before we get too far involved in this project, I think we need to kind of establish a little bit of a plan. So there's a couple things that this gauge needs. For one, it's going to need power. And also, we're going to have the exhaust gas temperature probe, the boost pressure probe, and then also the transmission temperature probe as well. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look and see if I can draw power from this fuse panel right underneath. There's a whole bunch of fuses here, and I actually found two of them that I can use uh, according to the gauge instructions, we're going to need to use one that is a key on source. So that is whenever you turn the key on, then it's going to send power to a circuit and when you turn the key off, it disconnects power from that circuit. And we're also going to need a constant 12 volt source as well to help keep the memory recognition of the gauge itself. Now in addition, we're also going to need to find a way to get the wires from the engine bay through the firewall into the cabinet itself for a lot of our sensor probes. And so I don't really want to have to drill holes in this firewall if I don't have to, at least not do it in a manner that is irreversible. So I think underneath the dash, if you take a look, there's actually 
a spot where the clutch master cylinder would go if you have a manual transmission. You can see it right underneath there. There's those two bolts there in a black plate. I'm gonna hopefully see if I can remove that and I'm gonna see if I can drill a hole through the black plate itself. That way, if ever I wanna undo it, I can just buy a new black plate. Certainly this may not exactly work if you have a manual transmission. You'll need to find a different way to route all the wires. If you take a look over here, you can see inside the engine bay that there is the other side of that black plate. Certainly if you have a manual transmission, then you're gonna have a clutch master cylinder there instead. Fortunately, this gauge cluster did come with this little instruction kit that does tell us a little bit about where everything's supposed to go, gives us a good layout. And the main one I'm concerned about for the time being is this power harness here that you can see has four wires coming out of it. Now I went ahead and I picked it up, it's right here. I got just the regular standard harness and it's actually only about 12 inches long, but yet I don't have any power sources that's readily within 12 inches. So this, so this power harness is actually going to plug into the back of the gauge itself, of course, and so that means we're going to need to extend the wires all the way to our power source, which I'm looking at actually pulling the power source from this fuse block that's right underneath the dash. Now to make this whole process a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and remove this lower kick panel. There's a bolt right here, another one on the other side, and this thing should just slide out. It'll take a little manipulation, but we can get it. Okay, and just like that, this thing should come out. Just being careful that this is old, brittle plastic, but of course mine's already broken. Go figure. Now, as for glow shifts recommendations, we need to find a couple of these power sources for the gauge cluster itself. So we need two main sources here. We need a switch source. Now that is one that when you turn on the key, it is going to turn on power. And we also need an unswitch source that is always on. So for those, I went ahead and I'm inside the cab here this is the fuse panel that's right underneath the block uh, underneath your dash and I'm looking at this fuse pattern right here and this is for of course the 7.3 power stroke diesel it's gonna be a little bit different if you have a different engine maybe a little different if you have a different year model now the one that I picked over here because there's a couple goofy criteria you have to have is that you want to make sure that everything fits underneath here because when you add in these fuse blocks you see they stick up significantly over everything else and they also might potentially interfere with some of these other fuses and so it'd be a pain if you want to replace them you have to pull out the fuse block and yada 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 so what I ended up doing was I found this one on the edge as being my switched source now that fuse is located in if you see right here position number 18 very over on the far right get the camera to focus there you go position number 18 Go down to the block is the very last one that controls the speedometer, the electric shift module. And of course you want to make sure that you are very secure with this because it does control some very critical components. Now a little piece of insight as to how these little fuse taps work. They're actually really cool. They plug into the regular fuse as you see here. But you still got to use that original fuse that you had. And so the original fuse actually goes into this lower block. So this fuse was originally my airbag one and it was located in this position. I'm gonna be using that as my constant unswitched source. Now, it originally called for that 20 amp fuse, and so that right there is in the lower section, and that is going to allow it to still serve its original function. However, on top of that, we're piggybacking this other fuse block that I'm going to use as my constant unswitched source for the gauge. Just so you guys get an idea as to which ones I'm using for sure, I'm using fuse number 18 over here, and that's going to be my switched power source. And I'm also using fuse number five over here that actually controls the airbag restraint. And that is what I'm gonna use for my constant unswitched source. And that's what I'm gonna tap my two fuse blocks into so that we can power the gauge. Now as one more check, I'm gonna make sure that I have selected the right fuse blocks just to be sure. So right now I have my keys completely out of the ignition. I've got them right here, sitting on the ground. And I'm gonna double check that I have one that is going to be a constant 12 volt source. And that should be this lower one right here. My scope is in my test light is indeed grounded right now. You'll see that we do indeed have a constant power source. Now I'm going to go over here to the switch power source, and you'll see that it is indeed deactivated. There is no power going to that. Now watch what happens. We're going to double check. I'm going to take my key and I'm going to put it in the ignition. The ignition is now on, and sure enough, we have power just like we want it. So this here upper one is going to be my switch source. To mark that, Glow Shift wants me to go ahead and 
use the white wire. So I actually got some white electrical tape and I'm gonna tape that around here real quick so I can see that for sure. All right, I've gone ahead and got that marked. And notice that this is going to correspond on my power cable. It's going to correspond to my white wire that I have right here, and that's going to be my switched power source for the gauge. Now that we have the two switch sources all hooked up, the next thing we got to do is figure out the ground. So I'm back underneath the dash here, taking a look at this clutch master cylinder cover that I have on my truck. I've hooked up the ground of my test light on it just to see that this is going to work because it looks like that could be a good place for me to establish the ground for the gauge. With that hooked up, I'm going to take my light, hook it back up to my constant source, and sure enough it works as a ground. Not knowing that that's going to work, I think that should work as a good ground for it. And of course I also got some black wire for that as well just so I can keep consistent with color. I had a little bit of that sitting around, but certainly for the wire, it really doesn't matter, it just makes it a lot better for housekeeping. All right, so I got this wire, grounded wire, all hooked up like I wanted it. Now I just want to make sure that it is indeed a good ground. Test it, and sure enough, looks like it is. So we've got good power there, and next we got to see if we can hook up the line that runs for the power source to the gauge itself. Okay, at this point I've got my three wires. I've got my red, white, and my ground, which is black. You notice that they correspond quite nicely with these ones that I have here. Again, the coloration matching doesn't, isn't necessary, but it just makes it a lot easier and makes sure I don't screw anything up. Now, the other thing I noted was that I have this orange wire. I'm not going to use that for the time being because that's actually for the dimmer switch. I'm hoping to just get this thing up and running for the time being. That might be a project later on down the road to tackle that dimmer switch. I'm probably just going to tape it off the side and mainly focus with these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull off these little caps. And I'm going to connect and make sure that this thing works alone by itself before we fully solder the connections. Oh, brilliant on my part. Well, if you think that these fuses here are a little bit dumb to have, think twice. I already blew one in the process of assembling this darn thing. Great. All right, so I got the wire loom all connected, put that all in there so it looks all nice. Doesn't look as quite as much of a mess, just like a big snake. Got it connected, and I'm gonna show you guys that it does indeed work. Check it out, put the key on. Beefs and everything, all oh, this sucker's working. Now, of course, right now I don't have any gauge readings just because I don't have anything hooked up. So the next thing that I'm gonna take a look at is going to be the transmission temperature sensor. All right, got myself a half-inch drill bit. I don't know if this will work or not. Got myself some safety goggles. Let's get to work. <laughs> oh, it's not going to fit. Hang on. No. So. Really? The drill won't fit. Okay, since I'm using the biggest drill that humankind has to offer, I have little room to work so I'm going to pull out my air intake temporarily just so I have a little more room to work. <sighs> yeah, I think I'll do it. <laughs> Woo, daylight. That should work. Let's <sighs> hope. All right, so transmission temperature probe thing. Let's make sure this sucker reaches. Okay, we'll go figure. I already ran into another problem. 
this thing's going to run extremely close to the exhaust manifold. Don't want this thing to burn up. So what I'm going to do is I'm wrapping in aluminum foil. I'm going to see if I can route it in a way that it goes as far away from the exhaust manifold as possible. So all I'm doing for this basically is I'm taking the aluminum foil shiny side out, wrapping it around there, and then I might secure it a little later on with some electrical tape. The idea behind this is that it'll help reflect some of the heat and protect the wires themselves. Back underneath the engine bay here, you can see where I ended up routing the transmission line. You can see it snakes behind the steering column here. And then I tried to hug it alongside the firewall as much as possible. And then it goes underneath to the transmission. Of course, I'll secure this up here a little bit better later on. Next, going underneath the truck, we're going to need to find the place where the transmission temperature sending unit actually goes into transmission. And I'll show you that here real quick. Okay, over here on the transmission on the driver's side, we're going to look up. And you can see this is the front of the transmission. That there is where the bell housing is. Engine oil pan. Of course, that's the back of the truck. Right up here, you can see that there is the transmission test port. It's actually used to test the pressure of the transmission, but we're going to use it in this case for the transmission temperature sending unit. Notice it is also right in front of the gear select mechanism as well. Okay, so I'm right underneath here. I've got my cables, you can see, hanging down. I'm going to use a 7 16 wrench. And I'm going to break that sucker loose. There we go. I'm going to grab a router quick because I think there might be some transmission fluid coming out of here. Okay, here we go. Let me pull that sucker out. Shouldn't be a whole lot of fluid coming out of here from what I've seen. Still. Got the center unit ready to go. A little rag underneath. And let's go to town. Just like that. Okay. Oh no. Well, at least you're not a whole, whole lot coming out. Drop the sending unit. Wiped it off though, don't worry. Alright, sucker's going in there. Okay, next up, got myself a 14 millimeter wrench. Just gonna tighten it down. Don't be too snug. Seems a brass plug came out of it. You also don't want to break this darn thing. Alright, that looks good. Now, I think just for seat of precaution, I'm going to get some electrical tape and wrap that around here. This stuff's going to be a bit in the elements. You want to protect it as best as we can, of course. Ouch, it's so tight. Okay, at this point, the next thing to do is to go ahead and install the boost pressure sensor. And a lot of people will actually drill into this Y intake pipe here and tap that, but it's kind of thin metal and I don't really think it'll hold the threads very well. It'll probably hold it just fine. But I don't really want to have to drill and tap if I don't have to. So I'm actually going to see if I can go through the map sensor line itself. And I'm going to use this T that I found. This actually from a fuel injection pump tester. See if I can get that to work so that I don't have to drill into anything, of course. And it, this thing should just screw in like that and it should work just fine. I'm sure you can probably get some brass pieces, but this is just something I had sitting around for an old fuel injection pump tester. So we'll use that. Go ahead and disconnect the line down here. Let's see if that thing will work. Okay, so now with that, I'm going to see if I can still use this exact line I have. And I'm going to see if I can mount the sensor as close to the map sensor as possible, because that's going to be closer to what the map's actually reading. And also, I want to see if I can limit the heat that goes to the sensor as well, to maybe hopefully maximize the life of the sensor because sitting right next to the engine life isn't going to be the best in the world. Electronics do not like heat. That's one thing I've learned. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this about here, I guess. Put your shears. Just like that. Slide that hose clamp on there. Slide that in. And grab one more hose clamp as well. And get this all in there. All right, at this point, this thing already has some sealant on it, so I'm just going to see if I can screw it in. Now, the only concern I have here is that by putting this T in line, I hope that it doesn't actually interfere with the reading from the map sensor. But that might work to our benefit later. 
to avoid having to put in a boost cooler. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to snug that down a little bit. Okay, second probably doesn't need to be too tight. We've got the wire here for it. Go ahead and plug that in. Looks just like an ICP sensor. <laughs> the next thing I want to do is I want to figure out where to put this line. I don't want it to be in any of the way the engine, but I found out there's this line here by the AC. You guys pull away these clips and set it back underneath here. And that should hold it up quite nicely. Looks pretty good too. All right, now that we've got the majority of everything else taken care of, next thing is to handle the exhaust thermocouple. So I'm just going to feed these two leads through the firewall. If I can. All right, at this point comes the fun and scary part at the same time. We're actually going to tap into the exhaust manifold for the EGT probe. So hopefully you guys can see this. I'm underneath the driver's side here. This is the driver's side exhaust manifold. I'm going to just see if I can find a good location. I'm trying to find a reasonably flat spot to put this and something I can access. I've got a center punch here. I'm going to go ahead and mark it. Use it to help start the hole. Definitely not the easiest to start under here. Right, I'm just going to go ahead and drill this through. And then I'll get back to you guys in the video here. Once I have it all drilled, I'm going to step it up one bit at a time. Stepping up down to a quarter of an inch. quarter inch through it's trying to get the bigger hole Let's see the inside of it that's cool I think I can step it up the full size now I'm gonna step it up to 2164 because that's what this gauge calls for okay it's all right that should be the last hole in here drill it's a pretty big hole there in the manifold definitely not going back now <laughs> Now luckily a lot of those chips and all that fill out and that's one of the nice things I like about being able to drill underneath but I'm still gonna see if I can get a magnet here later and pull some more of that crud out. But let's go ahead and grab the pipe tap real quick. Now every once in a while of course you want to pull it out and clean it. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Go grab some paper towels while I'm at it. Okay now one of the things you want to be cautious of whenever you are actually drilling this out is that these pipe threads are actually tapered. So you don't want to go all through all the way because otherwise you'll have to screw in your EGT probe adapter in all the way. So I've got my adapter right here. I went ahead and separated it from the EGT probe itself. This end right here, the fat end, is going to be the 1 8 inch end that we're going to stick in the hole. And I'm going to just get it to where I can have it set in there fairly well. I haven't really made this tap very well, very far, but right now it's still a little bit small, not yet wanting to thread in, so i got to keep on and going. Grab some more oil. Just using WD-40, and we'll keep going. All right, well, I think I've finally gotten this thing tapped just well enough that it's going to work. Next thing I'm going to do is get a magnet to clean this out. So I'm turning this just enough so I can feel it's pretty darn snug. Okay, do not want to go too far, though. Just enough. And then we put the EGT broken. Now I'm going to go ahead and slide in myself some slack. Slide in the EGT probe. Okay, it's got its own little seal. Went ahead and grabbed a second 12 millimeter wrench so that I can hold the back while I tighten the front plate. Doesn't need to be too terribly tight again. Just enough to put a brass washer. And I hope that should do it. All right, it's back in the truck right now. And I'm going to go ahead and put this adapter in for the EGT probe to go from the wire itself to the gauge. Fortunately, there's really only one way these things can go together. And then probably type the slack and then plug this in and 
see how it all works. Just wire it up and make it look neat. Well, in case you guys are wondering what all I did to you clean up all the rat's nests that I had, I went ahead and put this wire loom around all of my sensor lines. So this really looks, looks a lot better. Don't worry, I didn't leave the transmission temperature line wrapped in aluminum foil. The aluminum foil is still there, but I use it as a secondary boundary to help protect it from the heat in addition to that wire loom and a bunch of electrical tape. I think it actually looks pretty good now. We definitely don't have as much of a rat's nest as we used to. Okay, also going over here to the gauge itself. I ended up using the gauge setup that came with this one. It actually works pretty pretty well, as you can see. The gauge mount actually just uses this 3M adhesive and actually sticks to the side of your A-pillar. And then I've got a wire loom for all the wires coming out of it. And it's got this shield around it. And let me go ahead and show you guys the startup sequence here real quick. So you put the key in the ignition. And there you go, flashed a couple times. Pretty cool. Well, let's go ahead and take this thing for a test spin so that we can I can show you guys that it does all work. Let's go for a spin. So I gotta say, all things considered, I'm pretty darn well happy with this gauge. So far, everything seems to be working just fine on it. Exhaust gas temperatures, reasonable transmission temperatures, good to know, and boost pressure just kind of cool. Haven't had any hiccups just yet. Now, one thing I will caution you guys on, if you're putting your gauge together and it's just flashing, that's probably because a connection isn't all the way made in one of the probes. I had that issue with mine. Now, you gotta, of course, have making sure that all of your probes are hooked up for this, all of them are connected to the back of the gauge in order to get it to stop flashing. Just a little piece of advice there for you. But, in the event that you aren't able to fix the problem, there is, of course, that always that potential that the gauge is defective even though this is generally a little lower cost brand. But right now, this thing seems to be good quality. I don't have any qualms with it. The wiring seems a little bit thin at times, but other than that, this thing seems to be working great. And I'm happy with it. I guess time will tell. We'll see how long this thing will last. Hopefully it will stand up to the test of time. Well, of course, you know what they say. Hindsight's always 20-20. So I wanted to give you guys a little piece of informational bits of advice that I've learned, picked up, that I probably would have done differently had I done this gauge setup before. So first off, I think I might have drilled the exhaust gas temperature probe just a little bit too deep and tapped that just a little bit too much. You're supposed to drill it through all the way, of course, but I tapped it a bit more than was necessary. So what I recommend is when you're going through and doing that, try screwing in your EGT adapter that actually screws into the manifold. See how far that can go in. If it goes in sufficiently, then it's fine, you don't need to trap it out anymore. And also make sure you do not over tighten that because those threads will strip out and you do not want to have to do it with that with cast iron. Well folks, that pretty much does it for this video here today. Hope to help you out and hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave that in the comment box below. And also, if you drive an old truck like me, be sure to subscribe to this channel and you can stay updated on the latest videos that I have. Happy trucking.